Hello, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the JG Maker Artist D Pro. It's the first time I've had the chance to get my hands on an IDEX printer. So let's take it for a spin and see how it performs. So starting off just to get the legal stuff out of the way, this printer was provided to me by JG Maker on the condition that I do a review on it. The words and opinions are my own. Nothing has been paid for. They just simply provided me with the printer to review. So the JG Maker Artist D Pro, it's an IDEX printer. We'll go over some of the stats for it. It comes with a heated bed. It's got a 300 by 300 by 350 millimeter print volume. It is a Cartesian or bed flinger style printer. We have dual extruders. It is an IDEX. IDEX stands for independent dual extruder. Both of these extruders run on a MGN 12 linear rail, whereas the Z and the bed itself do ride on V wheels. Both of these extruders are direct feed, and they do have a few little tricks as well that I'll get into later. The printer is powered by a 32-bit board and comes with quiet TMC 2208 drivers, and the assembly itself is quite simple. It comes in two main pieces. You have your gantry assembly and the bed assembly. They screw together, and then after that, you just need to tension the belt that connects the dual Z motors to prevent them from coming out of sync. Attach your spool holders, and then go ahead and connect all the ribbon cables for powering both extruders. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of ribbon cables. However, these ones do seem pretty robust. They've held up quite well. Everything is labeled for where they go and they do have a quite sturdy connector. And worst case scenario, if one of these do get damaged, you do have one spare each of the longer ones for the Z and the shorter ones for the X motion. Now, after assembly, the setup process for leveling the bed is quite simple. This printer doesn't come with any form of ABL or bed probe, so you do have to manually level the bed, and the process is actually quite simple. You know it is an IDEX. What you do is you start off by leveling the bed to the first hot end nozzle, and while, again, it doesn't have any form of ABL, you do have the option of moving the tool head to preset points on the bed using the controller. So you level your bed normally, and then what you do is you select your second nozzle, and you don't need to re-level your bed. Both these tool heads run on the same X rail, but you do need to adjust your Z offset for your second nozzle. And this is actually quite simple. There is four screws on the back of the tool head. You loosen those screws and then using a screw up top with a spring, you're able to raise and lower the second hot end assembly. So after adjusting that so that the nozzle grabs onto my feeler gauge at the same force that the first tool head does, you screw everything back down, double check, and after that point, both your tool heads are correctly set up for your Z offset, your bed is level, and you do need to do one more quick thing. You have to do a test print, a calibration print, just to ensure that your X and Y offsets between the two nozzles is correct. These can be adjusted manually through the firmware using the touchscreen. Now, when it comes to the extruders for this, they do have something that's a little bit different than most other printers, and that is they have a quick release nozzle assembly. With the filament unloaded, pushing the quick release button allows you to pull out the whole nozzle heat break assembly and insert a new one. Simply push button, drop out, and replace. Now, the printer does come with some 0.4 millimeter nozzles installed, as well as some extra 0.4 millimeter nozzles, 0.6 millimeter nozzles, and a pair of 0.8 millimeter nozzles. However, bear in mind, these nozzles are PTFE lined. So if you want to print plastics above a temperature of approximately 240 degrees Celsius, unfortunately with the nozzles that come with this printer, you're going to be a little bit out of luck. So the printer is set up and now we can go ahead and start printing. So while this is an IDEX, I wanted to make sure that everything was configured good. So we started off with some single extruder prints. Now this is where I ran into the first shortfall with this printer. Um, while it does come with some very good documentation for how to assemble the printer and how to operate it, it doesn't come with any pre-configured slicer profile for this printer. Um, there is an ideal maker profile for the printer on their website. However, that is simply a machine profile. It's not a slicer profile. So there really is no pre-tuned profile that you can run this printer at. You're gonna have to set one up yourself and tune one yourself. So starting off uh, for the individual prints, I fell back to my go-to slicer, which is Super Slicer. And I used a Prusa Mark III profile as a base adjusted some things such as some speeds and feeds and the printer size itself and I started to print. Now the first individual print that I printed on the printer was this uh, stocks model and for the very first print off this machine, uh, actually printed quite well and this was in the P2 
PLA sample that came with this printer. And unlike most printer samples, this actually came with two quarter kilogram spools, actually on spools. It doesn't come with the, uh, the baggie of completely useless filament that most printers come with. I gave TPU a shot, and this is some Sparta 3D TPU. Just a little Slime Rancher slime, just to ensure that it can handle flexibles, and it is a direct feed setup. Now, the extruder is only single geared. There is no dual feed, and it's not a geared extruder. However, it did handle the TPU quite well, as long as you didn't really push the speeds too fast. And the next thing I did was give the power loss and filament runout sensors a try. So I printed this Stave Puff Marshmallow Man in some marble PLA. And the first thing I did was the power loss recovery feature. So while it was printing in the middle of the print, I unplugged the printer. Uh, this simulated a power loss and I wanted to see how it would recover from a full power loss. Turning the printer back on gives you the prompt to resume the print. The bed heats back up, the nozzle heats back up. It rehomes your X and your Y, and then it resumed printing. Now it does leave a little bit of a scene where the power loss took place. At first I thought this was some sort of skip step in the offset for the XY. However, I think this is more either the gantry dropping ever so slightly because again, it can't rehome the Z. Um, and while it is lead screw, there is potential that it does drop ever so slightly or the fact that when it resumes, it resumes on the full layer that it was on. So it may have double extruded a little bit on the walls. Either way, uh, depending on what you're printing, a slight seam is Definitely better than having to restart a multi-hour print, potentially. The next thing I tried was the filament runout sensor. This printer does have filament runout sensors for both of the filament feeds. So I cut the filament, let it run out. Gives me a warning saying that it's out. It beeps at you continuously until you reinsert the filament. You hit resume and it carries on from where it lets off. Again, it does leave a slight uh, defect in the print um, as it's not fully primed, I think when it resumes. However, this is potentially better than the alternative that is, again, losing a multi-hour print. So the printer prints quite fine with a stock Mark III profile with Super Slicer. So as you can see, this printer does print quite well. However, this is an IDEX printer, printing single color objects one at a time. That's not what this printer really strives at. It's an IDEX. You have two extruders, let's use them. So the first thing I did was the sample test print off of the SD card, and this is two of the Happy, lucky cats, I guess. And this demonstrates the first type of printing that you can do with an IDEX printer, and that is duplication. You can print the same thing twice at the same time. Uh, this is very good if you need to print multiple things very quickly because you double your print speed essentially. And it does a direct copy on one side of the bed versus the other. So obviously you can't print something that's the full size of the bed. You're limited to about half the size of the bed for the object itself, of course. However, you can print two at a time. You can also print mirrored objects. So say you need a left hand and a right hand component, you can print a mirrored object on the opposite side of the bed at the same time. But what most people use a IDEX or a dual extruder printer for is multicolor or multi-material prints. And this is where I ran into the first real design issue I encountered with this printer. This printer comes with a brush and a drool bucket. Now this is for collecting any bits of filament that leak out of the nozzle while it is parked when the other hot end is being used. However, by design, when the tool head parks, it actually parks with the nozzle sitting directly over the brush. And with the nozzle just sitting over the brush, that leads to a problem. And this ties into the fact that the printer doesn't come with a tuned slice profile. So I was using Super Slicer and I actually encountered this problem as well with Prusa Slicer with this printer was as part of the tool head change um, in the slicer, it's supposed to do a long retraction. This pulls the filament out of the nozzle to prevent drooling. However, with Super Slicer and Prusa Slicer, it wasn't doing that. It would park the tool head and then it would just continue to ooze plastic. Now in the G-code, it was supposed to be working correctly. However, it just didn't function. So when I tried to print this multicolor frog here, what was happening was, was the filament just kept oozing into the brush and it just made this big glob of plastic. Eventually the tool head actually got stuck in it at one point and caused a layer shift for one of the tool head assemblies. And it just caused a stringy mess of a print. It wasn't too clean. So it's a 3D printer. I have multiple 3D printers. We can print a solution. So I went on Thingiverse and found a different drool bucket brush assembly that I attached to the printer. This works much better. Um, it gives a chance for the brush to actually scrape off the filament before moving into the print zone. And it has a little removable bucket to collect the little bits that ooze out. 
So normally I would take a look at the printer as it is out of the box. However, this was actually impeding me from doing successful multicolor prints. And yeah, it's a short print. It's an easy swap. It's only two screws. You might as well go ahead and do it. So moving on, um, I kept trying to get successful prints with Prusa Slicer and Super Slicer. However, I kept getting unsatisfactory prints with just lots of stringing and oozing issues. Anytime I tried to print something that had a very small detail of just one color, it would always under extrude. So after the issues with Prusa Slicer and Super Slicer, I tried to use Cura. It worked a little bit better, but on the suggestion of JG Maker and somebody else who has this printer on Twitter, um, I switched over to Ideal Maker. And at that point, that's when I started to get more successful with the dual color prints. This issue of under extrusion, when you're printing just a small detail with the one extruder, kept repeating. Um, I ended up resorting to simply using a large purge tower to ensure that the nozzle was fully primed. I can never get it to really prime properly uh, in the park position before moving into the print area. I ended up going with a prime tower uh, just to ensure that plastic was flowing properly in the nozzle before moving into the actual print itself. And that's when I printed this big guy here. Now this guy is a dual color print and this is probably the cleanest dual color print I've done to date. I'm very happy with the results. And at that point I was pretty confident in the slicer settings and how this printer would operate. Now the last thing I tried is with dual extrusion you can do multi-material. And with multi-material, that opens the avenue for dissolvable filaments. Now, this is something that's possible with a dual extruder, single hot end with a Y splitter setup. However, with multi-material, you'll never quite get the nozzle fully purged between the two materials. There's always a risk of contamination. With an IDEX setup like this with tool independent tool heads, being able to print multi-material is much cleaner and much simpler. And multi-material allows you to do things such as print with dissolvable filaments. So this is actually the first time I've tried a dissolvable filament print and I had some issues with the PVA I had on hand sticking to PLA so I ended up actually printing with nylon and the print wasn't the cleanest. Um, this printer isn't the greatest at nylon I found especially with my limited time with it so far. However I did get a functional print with the PVA sticking properly and this is a little test gear print and trying to print this with supports that are not dissolvable would be pretty much impossible. You would never be able to get out the supports if this is all a single material pr print. However, with the dissolvable filament, you're able to print quite intricate designs all in one piece, such as this. So those are my thoughts and opinions and my experiences with this printer after having it for a couple weeks now. Uh, I wish I had more time to do, especially some larger prints. However, unfortunately, real life kind of interferes at time and you only have so many hours in a day. Now, is this a printer for you? It really depends what you're looking for in a printer and your skill level. With the dual extruder setup and the fact that this printer doesn't come with a fully tuned slicer profile, this isn't really a beginner machine. This is something from somebody more intermediate into 3D printing that knows how to tune a slicer profile, has experience with multi-material or is bored of a single extruder setup and looking for something a little bit more advanced. Um, this is a quite large and a quite heavy machine. Uh, so if you are looking for something that fits on a desk or in a cabinet, this probably wouldn't be the machine for you. And you are stuck with proprietary nozzles with this machine. And the nozzles themselves, um, while it does come with quite a few nozzles, the manufacturing of the nozzles is actually not the greatest. The whole locations aren't exactly centered. And while I didn't really have any issues with prints, being able to throw like a high quality nozzle X or a copper plated nozzle in one of these printers would definitely be an advantage. The lack of ABL I found wasn't really a huge issue. After leveling it once, um, the printer held its level the whole time. I've never had to re-level this after the initial level. And while it does come with a removable flex plate to help make removing prints easier, it has like a build tack like material on it. It's not a PEI. And I found PLA really sticks to this. And by really sticks, I mean, make sure you still have your scraper on hand. You know, this is a flex plate. So the TLDW of this review, it's a well-built machine. It's sturdy, it's solid. I didn't have any mechanical issues with it. Everything performs quite well. The biggest issues in my opinion with this printer are the proprietary nozzles. While the quick change nozzle is a nice feature to have, I don't really change nozzles too much and now you're locked into those proprietary nozzle heat brick assemblies. The machine itself is quite loud in terms of the fans on it. However, the actual movement of the printer isn't too bad with the TMC drivers. 
The biggest knock against this printer is the lack of a tuned slicer profile, especially with the tool head changeover between materials. And I would like to see a machine like this, especially in this price range, that would come with a pre-tuned slicer so that you can fully take advantage of it out of the gate instead of having to spend quite a bit of time tuning to get your prints to an acceptable level. So I hope you enjoyed this review of the JG Maker Artist D Pro printer. If you'd like to get one yourself, I do have a link in the description. I hope you found this video informative and I hope you learned something new today. If you like this video, make sure you like that smash button. If you want to see more content such as this or any of my other projects, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.